All right, so a couple of weeks ago, I reached out to those of you who are studying improvising and new to the craft to, uh, to write me in with comments about things that are specifically troubling to you. What's the hardest part about improvising or learning the craft of improvising that you're coming across as an emerging uh, soloist? And I got some, some answers back, and I want to share them with you today. Okay, here we go. Rich writes... I run out of steam and ideas about 30 seconds into a solo. Boy, that's a bummer, isn't it? How, how many of you have the same exactly? When I was, uh, when I was brand new at soloing, same thing, man. I would, a big start and then like, oh God, what do I do now? Steve says he has trouble getting off the page. Says it's hard to play without having a sheet music in front of him. Right? Yep, I get it. Uh, those of us who came out of, you know, school band, concert band, marching band, and all that sort of thing, you know, the sheet, you trust the sheet. You trust the sheet because everybody behind you and to your, to your left and your right and in front of you, they all trust the sheet too. And it's really hard to, you know, step into a new frame, a new way of thinking, and put the sheet away, memorize the music and make it, you know, internal. Todd says he couldn't identify the roots of the chords when he sat down to do a jam. Uh, he was totally lost. He couldn't even figure out what the bass, what the first note, what the, the root tone of the chords that were being played were. And I, I suspect, you know, that, that a lot of you have the same thing. You know, this is a moving target. That band doesn't stop for anybody or anything. They just keep going. And until you get comfortable in the environment, you'll probably feel the same way. Uh, here's a name I might mispronounce. In fact, I probably will, so forgive me, please. Topinember, Topinembor, says he has trouble improvising across multiple measures with different chords. I suspect what he means is playing the changes. Something like that? All right. Steve Clayton, how you doing, Steve? Steve says he has trouble following the form of a tune, and he gets lost. That is so common as well following where are you at? Where are you at in the solo? You're thinking so much and working so hard on your solo, you've lost. Where are you? How many measures have you played? How many have you got to go? I get that. And then uh, here's another one with no name wrote, he's fed up with lessons about patterns and which patterns to play over, say, which two five ones or two fives, that sort of thing. And I get it. Yeah, friends, I, I pity those of you who are trying to learn how to improvise solos, no matter what the music form is. I don't care if you're doing jazz, I don't care if you're into funk, or you're playing country music, or polka music, or whatever it is. I don't care what it is. If you're learning how to become a soloist and emerge as a soloist, and you're brand new to the art form, and you're looking for help on YouTube, I, I actually pity you. I feel there are so many just different approaches. Every different guy, every man and woman has a different approach. There are the three easy steps that you need that'll get you to solo perfectly. Okay, that's that's on there. I, I've seen that on YouTube. And I'll bet it works. There's another guy that's a very, very famous, well-placed pianist, and he's... Uh, He's selling some lessons with a partner on YouTube as well. I'm not going to mention names because I'm going to be highly critical here. And what he says is uh, you should just stay home until you figure out what you have to say. And don't come out and try soloing until you figure out what you have to say. Now that to me, I mean, I just, I just felt like I got slapped in the face with a wet mackerel because that's like telling a kid, hey, you know, don't bother learning the language. Because, you know, you may, I, yeah, you may be able to talk, but you'll never have like a, a brilliant, you'll never say anything brilliant. So just, just forget about it. On the other hand, there's another guy, a sax player, amazing sax player. Again, well-placed, and he's coming through a very, very well-respected platform. One we all know and love, and I, I'm, again, I'm not going to mention names because I'm going to be critical here. And he says, no, you don't have to tell stories. You don't have to have anything to say. You just have to play the changes. That's all you got to do. You got to play the changes. And his program is about having you to, uh, to memorize, you know, patterns, lines, things like that, or record changes that uh, they've recorded and they have for you. Uh, the Jamie Abersold stuff, right? Uh, chord, uh, that's the paint by numbers approach 
to to learning how to play a jazz solo. He's got uh, he's got the scales over the chords, and to help you out, he's even colored in the 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 notes that are the chord tones: the one, three, five, and the seven, in in each of those scales. Uh, one of my students came in um, high school, middle school, and uh, they have a band jazz class. And she said uh, she she got to solo. And I said, "What did the teacher tell you? What what was the instruction that you got?" She said, "He told us just to play a blues scale, right? Just play a G blues scale. We're in concert B flat, uh, and that's for E flat instruments." And I thought, "Well, okay." I mean, good enough. I mean, you know, the the the, the blues scale is kind of like the like the starter kit, and it'll help you uh, in a way, but it's very limiting. All of the things that we're talking about are very limiting, and none of them are actually the way that you would want to learn how to improvise or how to you know create solos on your single note instrument, on your saxophone, your tenor, your sax, your berry. No matter what you play, no matter what kind of music it is, soloing is soloing. Okay. Songs are all built, and and they're they're built you know following the same rules of music. So we we don't have to go there and take that apart. What I really want to talk to you about is that um, the, it's it's a lot easier to teach you those kinds of things because they can also they can be distilled into a PDF and they can be sold to you. The way to learn how to solo is stuff that you already know how to do. It's not hard to do, but it's time consuming and it's it's kind of you got to do it. I mean, you, you, it's 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 one of those kinds of things that you can do by yourself. You can do you can do you already have. You don't need anything. You don't have to go buy anything. You don't need a new mouthpiece. You don't need new reads. You don't need PDFs. You don't need a book. You don't need backing tracks. You don't need any of that stuff. It's stuff that you already know how to do, and therefore it's stuff that is worthless because I can't sell it to you. Instead, I'm going to give you three lessons. They'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks. And they will be right here, so I will post. Uh, I'll post them, and I'll post one a week. All right. There are prerequisites for these lessons. All right. There are prerequisites, and don't you don't you fool around here. I'm am serious about this. If you want to learn how to be a good solo, if you want to learn to be a soloist, if, you know, just improvise. You got it. These are the prerequisites for this course. Okay. Again, you don't have to sign up. It doesn't cost you any money, and it's built with stuff that you already have inside of you. Okay. Stuff that you already have and can access to. First, the first prerequisite is you got to have your major scales. And no, don't, don't, you can kid yourself all you want, but you can't kid me, okay? You got to have your major scales. And I'm talking all of them, there's 12 of them. Work around the dial, get them. Circle of fourths, circle of fifths, get them and make them fluid and make them beautiful. Majors, I'm just talking majors here. I'm not talking diminished, half diminished, augmented, none of that. Leave it alone, just get your majors, okay? The second prerequisite for, for these courses are that, well, they're, they're really not courses, they're me talking to you. So, okay, in as much as I'm talking to you and this is a course, there'll be courses. They'll be just like this. Me sitting here with a new background, by the way, which is vaguely out of focus. I, I have an art director who's helping me and he said, try some new ideas out. So we're trying some new ideas out. Anyway, the second prerequisite, you, you got you to have somebody to play with. Okay, practice buddy, practice pal, I don't care. Maybe even a little band, maybe put a little combo together. Piano player, bass, guitar, whatever, anybody. Anybody who can play changes, who can play these songs, and that you can say, hey, let's work on this song this week, and let's get together on Monday and work on it and chop it out, okay? That's a prerequisite. You cannot do this stuff alone. You cannot do this stuff listening to your computer. You cannot do this stuff watching somebody on YouTube. You will not learn the art, the craft of improvising, all right? How did I learn? I didn't go to college to learn improvising. I learned on the bandstand. I learned on the bandstand by playing with better people than I was. Everybody was better than I was. Everybody's better than everybody is for a time, okay? When I was 10 or 11 years old, I got a saxophone. I think I was 10 years old. I probably told you this story before. I got a Con Alto, a little more of those shooting star altos. And uh, there was school band, and school band was a big part of everybody's life when we were kids uh, back in the day when music programs were abundant in all the schools. And uh, it was either that or choir. So I got in a school band. I wanted to play clarinet because Ricky Welsh played clarinet. And by God, I thought he was the coolest kid. And, you know, I wanted to do what he did. My parents, somehow, and I don't know, I don't know how to this day they managed because we were dirt poor, but they scraped it together. And they hooked me up with a brand new Con Alto 
out of the box from Ozzy's music in La Mesa. Amazing. What a, what a, what a fortuitous, you know, I mean, a clarinet, Lord knows what would have happened to me. But the saxophone, right? Still playing. I still look at a saxophone and I, I look at it with that, that sense of wonder. So at any rate, uh, the, the school band, you know, hot crust buns and all that, we were playing the same stuff then that, uh, you know, most school age kids are playing now. And I'm doing this thing with some kids after school. I got asked to join a, a, a little rock band that a drummer had put together. Uh, his name is Chris, and he had this sparkle tone blue Ludwig drum set that was just, I mean, just marvelous just to be in the room with. This thing was, oh, just beautiful, and he could play it. And even better, he could play the solo to Wipeout, right? Look up Wipeout. It's mostly a long drum solo. He could play that. And I learned how to play my part from the guitar players. I think we probably had seven guitar players in that band. Maybe I exaggerate. But I learned by listening to the guitar players. This would start a trend. This is how I learned how to play music for the rest of my, pretty much the rest of my natural life, until I got to high school and found jazz in a great jazz program. Again, another fortuitous move because my parents, where they lived, I had to go to Crawford High School in East San Diego. And, you know, 40, 50 years ago, people are still talking about that jazz band. And they were amazing people that I played alongside. And that got me into the habit of playing with people who were vastly better than me and learning from them. So I learned how to solo by playing with other people. We also had records. We would play records and listen to the record. You know, you'd pick up the tone arm and put it back and listen to it and pick up the tone arm and put it back and listen to ad nauseum, right? So we listened to records and copied them and played with people who were better than me that gave me pointers and tips and, you know, that, you know, basically I sucked. And, you know, that's part of the whole equation. I sucked all the way up till I stopped sucking. Well, you know, it's a, it's a process, right? And, and I'm sure I still suck at some, you know, for, forgive my language. I, I still play poorly in some areas uh, that I'd like to improve in because you, you kind of never get to the finish line when you're learning to, you know, play an instrument. But still, my point is, is that I learned in real time, real experience. Now, the, 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 the online, you know, and I think the YouTube thing is, is incredible. I mean, here we are. Here I am talking to you, right? It's absolutely one of the most amazing, you know, tools that we have at our disposal. And you get to, you get to sit with amazing players and study on them and, and listen to them. And you just push a little button. The problem is, is it takes the personal thing. The, the personal thing comes out of it. And the secondary loss is that you don't have the clubs now that we had. Uh, when I was growing up, we had a lot of we had a lot of clubs where live music was played. I could go hear a live saxophone. I could hear a saxophone player, an actual live person, fill up a room with that sax and listen to them interrelate with each other, have musical conversations with each other. So that's the that's the gist of it right there. To do this course, you've got to have, like I said, courses kind of quote unquote. To listen to me talk about how. The proper way to improvise, the proper way to learn that you can learn how to improvise, the, the true way is for you to be able to play all your major scales. Execute flawlessly. Don't, no clinkers, no rust. Sand the rust out. Oh, there goes Jackson. The studio dog is, uh, I, I, you know, he's so, he's so good at this. He just barks and I feel so safe. Anyway, Jackson, back to you. And you got to have someone to play with. Okay, you got to cultivate someone to play with. Now, it's not always easy to find someone to play, you know, to, to sit and play with and jam with and just have, you know, that that practice time with, but you got to have it. You have to. You cannot do this in the privacy of your home, sitting in front of a little screen, your whatever it is, and expect to get anywhere. You cannot get there playing along to, you know, the Abasol tracks are wonderful, but you're not going to get to to the top level. You're not you're not, you're not going to get past. You're not going to get out the door. All right? as long as you're staying home and playing along to pre-recorded stuff. You got to do it with another person. Promise me that. Okay, let's get back to work now. Enjoy your horns. Enjoy your life. Hey, it's the weekend here in Southern California. Warm weather is back and it's good to be, it's just, it's just good to be basking in the glow of the banana belt here. I'm not your cold weather guy. All right. All of those of you who are out there, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, if you have any questions, DaveGoodSax at gmail.com. Got any problems with uh, with improvising? Uh, again, throw them on the pile. I'd love to hear from you. DaveGoodSax at gmail.com. Or leave them in the comments below. We'll get back to you. 
and uh, you will hear from me again next week. All right, take care. Enjoy. Thanks for being here.